this video, we're going to be diagnosing uh, an issue that's come up with some of these uh, 4x4 ranchers. This is a Honda um, 350, I'm sorry, TRX 350FE with electric shift. It's a 2005 Honda Rancher um, 4x4. Uh, there's an issue where I can't seem to shift gears anymore with the electronic shift, and this is what happens. So you turn the ignition. And you'll see that the drive that it's in will blink five times and then stop and then blink five times again, stop and keep repeating. Now, if you look this up in the diagnostic manual, it says something about an ECU motor driver circuit problem. And usually that's going to come down to two things. Either the ECU is bad or, you know, the entire, you know, the computer for the, uh, the main computer for the four-wheeler is bad or there's also another uh, issue which comes up in between those two, which is um, there's a part, it's called the, uh, the shift, uh, it's the motor, shift motor itself, which can go wrong. And I'm going to show you how we're going to diagnose that today. Okay, it's an electric shift motor itself. It's down here. If you go, come along the right side and you crouch down, you can see it, and it's actually right here. It's this piece right here. And it, there's a cable that runs underneath it and actually connects towards the front underneath. And I'm going to show you where it's connected. It's the skid plate. If you come up above the skid plate, I've already unplugged it right here. It's this white piece right here, and it plugs right in right there. So I'm actually going to take a break on the video here, and I'm going to start measuring the resistance between these two wires that should give us a good idea on the resistance between the motors because when the when you turn on the engine the ECU does a quick check and looks at the resistance on the motor on the electric shift motor I should say and it determines if it's in a certain range it's okay to you know go ahead and start shifting and, and starting up normally if not it's going to start kicking out that code and you won't be able to shift uh, gears at all so stay stuck there so let's take a look at it I've come in here and I've connected um my uh, multimeter into the uh, electric uh, motor shift um, connector here and I'm showing here I've got it set to the resistance I'm showing zero resistance so that's not good so I'm going to pull these out and actually I have a, a new electric motor shift over here that I'm actually going to take this and plug it in down here so take this and just bear with me for a second here and connect this in on this side start measuring the resistance between it looks like I'm now getting some measurement here so it's interesting I'm getting about 10.7 ohms of resistance and so since the other one's got a, a complete no resistance whatsoever that seems to imply that there is a break in the motor itself so I'm not able to get um, any contact through both of them. So that's probably what the ECU picked up when I tried to start up the um, the four-wheeler and that's why I wouldn't it was throwing that uh, five blinking error code for the ECU motor drive circuit uh, problem. So um, all I have to do now is, is replace this uh, electric shift motor and everything should work the way it should assuming there's no other problems. Um, something you can do real quick to test and make sure that you're not going to have any issues is I'm going to actually take this I'm going to disconnect it and I'm going to hook up this right where the other one is right now and I'm actually going to with I'm not going to actually shift the motor but I am going to turn it on so I'm going to take this I'm going to plug it in up here just give me a second I got to turn it to the right side it's always fun to do one handed mm, that's not right so there we go so, plug this in, if I can manage it one-handed. <laughs> Guess I should just do this. There we go. Okay. There we go, now it's connected through. I've got the motor hanging out here on the ground. I'm not going to do any extra shifting, but watch what happens. When I come back over to um, start this up, I'm going to turn this off. Notice how it's still blinking, but I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to turn it back on. Let's see what happens if I'm going to get that fi that blinking code. And notice the blinking code went away. I'd be willing to bet. Um, 
once I connect this all up, it's going to work. So let's do that next and let's just confirm and make sure everything's working the way it should. What I've done is I've gone ahead and got in here. I disconnected the cable from where it was originally up here. There's a few of these uh, smaller, I don't know if you can see these, but there's some smaller zip tie locations. There were three of them on my vehicle. And two of them underneath, and then a third one right by this wheel. You had to loosen all three of those zip ties. I think you know, on mine you could do it by hand. Obviously, if you had to clip them off, you could put some new ones on, so you don't have cords, uh, uh, cables dangling. And then there's kind of a third or a fourth uh, bendable little piece here. It's semi-rigid, which you have to unbend a little bit to get the full cable off. And then the last thing you have to do to get the electric um, shift motor out of place is you just need a 10 millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter uh, socket. Uh, there were two of these hanging out uh, that you just you disconnect off of here with a ratchet. I've already done it. You can do it on your own. I'll pull this off now since it's ready to come out. And here we can see the electric shift motor. Uh, those two slots right there are where the uh, two uh, 10 millimeter uh, socket or the, the bolts went. Um, I've taken them off, put them to the side, and now I'm going to just repeat the same steps in reverse and put the new one back on and then we'll test it out. All right, I've got it all hooked up. I routed the, the cable and by the way, when you put on your new one, uh, make sure you put the orientation, uh, I mean it's going to... The part's going to go in and fit in like this into the gear drive, uh, but the cable should be in the bottom orientation, just like it is on mine. The cable comes from the bottom. It's going to snake around this way, come into this uh, sort of semi-rigid uh, hose. It's like a cable connector right here. You can kind of bend it and it'll hold its shape. comes under a tire. There's a zip tie down here. you got to tighten back up. And then there's going to be two other zip ties, uh, one right here, one up here, and then you finish it off by plugging it back in right at the very top. So now's the moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and try to start it up and get back on this. Bust out my keys here. Let's plug it in. Oops, looks like I had the wrong, uh, had the wrong keys. Hold on. <laughs> it's better. And then let's go ahead and try it now. And turn it on. Last time I was getting five blinks, and it looks like everything's working the way it should. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start it up. Looks like it started fine. Let's see if it'll shift. Look at that. It's shifting just nice now. Okay, looks like it's working the way I, I'd expect. So that's awesome news. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and shut her down. Anyway, that's a quick, easy way to fix the, the five blinking error code for the electronic shift. Um, also, just another reminder, I'm not a professional, so be cautious as you do this. Take, wear the right PPE, protective gear. Uh, also, when you're putting the, just one, one tip, when you're putting in this electric shift motor, just you might have to kind of wiggle it in a little bit, kind of shift it, rotate it a little bit as you're wiggling it in. And then obviously don't over tighten the bolts. So. Anyway, hopefully this video was helpful and quick and easy and uh, save yourself a ton of money because, you know, one of these new parts, and I'll put the, the part description for this particular uh, 2005 Rancher in my um, in the description of the video, but, I mean, this part cost me just under 200 bucks. Um, some people think, oh, the problem's with the, the computer uh, module, but uh, that'll cost you at least $400 to do that, so... This is a pretty quick way to see if, if it's this. If it's not this, it's more, li more than likely the computer unit, which is going to cost you a bit more. But uh, at least you can you know, save yourself some money by doing it yourself. So anyway, hope everyone has a great day, and uh, talk to you later.